Today I'm going to show you how you can restore a failed flash on a T8 unit. What we're going to need is basically to remove the ECU out of the car and we will need these cables or wires. It's basically just a piece of wire with a so-called mini ISO pin, which I'm going to link in the description. These are really inexpensive. And we're also going to need a 12 volt power supply. A little side note here. If you have a chance, you can get the wiring harness for this connector on the right here from a car from the scrapyard. And this is going to make things a lot easier. But at the same time, if you don't have that possibility, I'm going to show you how you can connect with just these cables. So on the left, you should now see the schematic on how we need to connect the wiring. You might see the numbers on the left and wonder how do I know that. I have basically yeah, the right pin. And this is pretty easy actually because the numbers of the pins are shown down here. So you can maybe see it very so slightly. I'm not really sure if you can, but yeah, it, it should be visible. So you see this is pin number one and this is number 17 and so on. And you have the same thing on the other side. So you can always be sure that you are on the correct pin. So let's start with ground, or actually as it's shown in the picture as muscle. So this should be pin number 63. And we know as a fact that the pin right here in this corner is pin number 64. Because as said, it's shown here, I will try to show you again. You can see the 64. So we know we need to go the pin to the right. And that, that's number 63. So let me do that really quickly for you. And what you're gonna do, as you can see, I'm just gonna hold it like this and gonna push it down there. And now I basically have it connected already. Just make sure that you push it all the way down, otherwise the connection might not be that stable. And next we're gonna need a wire for can high, this is the one I'm gonna use, and can low. And basically we're just going to continue like that, do it with all the pins we need. And once everything has been hooked up, this is how it's going to look like. So, the next thing we have to do is to basically get this hooked up to our computer. To do so, we're going to need, or at least should get some crocodile clamps, which look like this. And we're basically just going to hook everything up. So I'm going to use black now as an example for ground. So this is my ground, then I have red for power. I'm going to do this very slowly and carefully. And we got another power pin. And now the most important ones for us can high and can low. So green is basically the code. Oh, you see I hooked it up wrong. So green is basically the code for can high. We're gonna do that. So this is our green cable. This should be can high. And pin number six, very white one, that's can low. And now we actually have to get our interface. And I'm gonna show this with OBD Link SX because it's the cheapest interface. So I really want that everybody is able to follow this. So here we have OBD Link. And inside of OBD link there should also be numbers. And what you need to know is that this OBD layout here is basically also standardized. So you can look up every function of the pins. And obviously we want can high and can low to connect to this. If you're not sure which pin it really is, you can go and look it up on the internet because as I said it's going to be the same on all OBD connectors. But I'm just gonna show this with this video really quick. So, can high is basically on the top, which is pin number four. Actually, let me check that. No, it's pin number six. I'm sorry, because what you need to know, this is pin number eight, and this is pin number 16. It's kind of confusing. So we have to go and connect to pin number six, which is up here. So basically two pins to the right. And then we have to connect uh, can low, 
which is just right underneath. This can be a bit tricky to get here, especially with such big clamps. And you almost have it done. Because one more thing you need, and that's not what you can find in a manual, is to connect an additional ground wire. So we're gonna end up with two grounds, and I'm just gonna remove the can uh, high, just to show this better. And it actually goes on pin number four. So you see? This is how I have it hooked up. Now I'm gonna re-add can high. Hold on. And this is how it has to be. Looks really cramped up, but it works. And next up, we are gonna connect this to our power supply. And the only thing our power supply is gonna give us is basically ground and positive. So what we're gonna do is to take our two Ground wires. So this is the one from the OBD link. Here we go. And then we have one more from the ECU itself, which you connect to this, like that. And then we're gonna need our two power cables basically. So here we go. One more. And we are pretty much good to go. One final note, make sure that the wires don't touch with each other. So you definitely don't want can high to touch with can low, otherwise it's simply not gonna work. So my recommendation, once you have it hooked up carefully, you can just move them a bit around and make sure that everything is freely. And yeah, we are now pretty much safe to go and we are actually gonna power up our power supply. And Actually, it's possible to even flash with just 7 volts, but we're gonna do this the proper way. Increase it to around 12 volts. Yep, should be enough. And now we can actually connect the cable of our VD link to our laptop. Okay, now that we're actually back on our PC, we open up the Trinic hand flasher, make sure that everything is configured properly, and one thing we don't actually need to do is to unlock the system partitions, so you can untick that. And if you have a working ECU, you can connect it the same way. So you could test it now with get ECU info. And it should give you like the usual printout. But in case the ECU has been like soft bricked, that's not possible. So there are actually two ways you can restore the ECU. You can click on restore T8, which is kind of trying to get it into the bootloader mode. So we're gonna try this. And it tells you when to power on the ECU. I've done that. And it will now ask me for a bin file. And actually I'm gonna use one of my bins. So here we go. Okay, now it tells me to turn off the ECU. So you go to your power supply, switch it off. Turn it back on, and as you can see, it starts to restore the T8. So it's gonna take a while. It's gonna be. It's gonna look a bit different than the usual flashing procedure, but it should do the same trick. And as you can see, the flash has worked and we're gonna try to get ECU info. And it just reports back normally. Another way you can do to recover or restore the ECU is obviously the recover ECU function. And it's gonna ask you for the binary you wanna flash. And it's just gonna try to reboot the ECU. And as you can see, it starts to upload the bootloader and the recovery process will run through.
And as you can see, we have successfully restored the T8 unit.